Excellent work, Lasse. I just want to say that it is so great that you are my first participant um, in a long tradition um, of having brought scores to this orchestration challenge. Uh, and this is my first Patreon evaluation for, um, for the 2023 orchestration challenge, scoring Beethoven's Sonata number 24, originally in F sharp major and this time in F major for the orchestra, much better key. And uh, you know what a wonderful way to start. You, you have this really lovely brass chorale at the beginning and you know it's, it's it's got some doubling from bassoons and violas and so on. And then you also have a good deal of brass at the end and you are experimenting here with working with um, uh, with natural horns. And so, you know, the, the whole question is like, you know, how, like, how much does the choice of natural horns imply that you are trying to take a, an early 19th century approach, right? So I have to bring that, I have to take that into account when I am evaluating, you know, the effectiveness, you know, how good was the, was the natural horn scoring? So let's start with that. And I, I think that, you know, here we're seeing that you are using the bassoons to double your F horns in just about almost every pitch. And, and then we also see it here at the end. Um, you know, we got, we've got the same, the same pitches here. So, and you, and you know, on top of that, here we've got the violas also doubling those pitches. And some similar pitches being covered in the strings here and so on. It's not note for note. So like, like with that much doubling, then you know, then avoiding worrying about, you know, uh, worrying about stop notes and, and so on, it really becomes not that much of an issue, right? Because <clears throat> with, you know, with that much of a mixed sound, the occasional little snarly note, it's not going to make that much of an impression. And then, of course, when you surround it by with other instruments that are not going to have necessarily stopped pitches, then um, then you you know you don't really run into so many problems, except for the fact that you know here, if these are natural horns, uh, these trumpets really can't be uh, you know they they have to be piston trumpets, right? Because you know, unless the unless the player is sticking their hand in the in into the trumpet bell, which you know you know is something. I, I mean, it, it it did happen every once in a while, but it's really not part of the whole natural trumpet tradition, at least for this style of music. So you know, in order to get this F and this A and so on, and you know, da ba da 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 da, it just really is does not fit into the trumpet in C. You know, you might. If this were, say, a trumpet in F, right, then it, you might get a, a wider range of pitches. So, yeah, so, you know, if we say natural natural horns, piston trumpets, piston trumpets, you can do just about anything, right? Uh, so the question is, like, do we even need, though, you know, do we really even need the... Um, the, the piston trumpets, except for just to go, you know, da 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 da, ba 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 bum, right? You know, that if that's if that is their purpose, is you know that is to be able to play this. Uh, the, the thing I would question is using unison trumpets, right? Because it, it really has, you know, if you're doing this sort of fancy footwork, you know, da 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 dum, ba ba da 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 dum, that fast with a duet trumpets, it, you know, it just I mean, it, it really is going to sound almost like jazz, right? You know, like like a like a you know like a jazz riff, right? As 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 opposed to just a single trumpet has a more much more noble sound, right? Um, so so those are some you know those are a couple of things to think about. Yeah, then of course you've got alto trombone joining in as well, um, uh, harmonizing and so on, and and that's you know that's pretty cool. I I like the I like you using the set here. Back in the old days, this is something I didn't really get a chance to get into in my um, 
in my pitfalls video. This is not really relevant, but you know the alto would be pitched in E flat, the uh, tenor trombone would be pitched in E flat, or sorry B flat, and then the bass trombone would be pitched in F, which we don't do anymore. Like the today's bass trombones are basically large bore B flat instruments with um, with some extra little triggers that open up uh, additional amounts of tubing tuned in different pitches so that you know the player can really get low and I would say you know I would tell you which one that was except there are different models with different triggers right uh, and then then the contrabass today's contrabass trombone is pitched in the low F that the whole the old bass trombone used to be pitched in and it and it has like a much much bigger bore and it gets this massive bellowing sound if you want it to all right so the whole question about this in according to my criteria is you know did this intro set the mood effectively and i and i feel you know kind of looking at the whole continuity of this passage i think that you're sort of starting with brass and and bassoons and strings and so on and you're kind of ending that way too then i i think that it does sort of you know you've got these bookends kind of very similar textures um, and you know, of course, this like uh, suspended symbol being rolled by um, uh, by snare sticks and so on. That is not really something that uh, Beethoven would have used in during his era. If you hear a little bit of kind of snarly, speaking of snarls, um, a little bit of snarly um, kind of uh, construction tools. Um, in the distance, my neighbor has suddenly decided, taken it into their head to do some work around the house. So, um, yeah, so we're just going to have to deal with that. I was hoping that they had finished, but now they're back to it. So just ignore it if you can. All right, so now, uh, so yeah, I mean, it just, I mean, it, it works. If you like that really dark, warm sound then this is perfectly fine um but yeah i think that i do a on the da -da 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 -dum, it's just it's just a bit you know or maybe kind of military this it's it doesn't really have that kind of beautiful loose lyrical sound but you know for everything else there's it's not badly orchestrated there's really no need to start with mezzo piano Right? Why don't you start with piano in crescendo, right? Da, 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 da. Get all the way up to mezzo forte. Da, 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 da. And then diminuendo. Da, 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 da. I mean, if you've got the crescendo in here from piano and pianissimo, why can't you do crescendo from piano back here? And that way you don't have to start with a, a very <clears throat> bland dynamic. Uh, I mean, mezzo piano has its uses, don't get me wrong, especially in film music when you want to, <clears throat> when the music needs to keep going um, and you've got dialogue or, or sound effects or, you know, things like that, foley, um, that's very important to the scene. So... <clears throat> but here, I think that it's just blah. It's just kind of a blah sound, you know. <clears throat> and you know, for instance, here as well, you you could start piano, um, you know, da, 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 just give it more shape. Ba, 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 ba. You know, it doesn't have to be so mezzo. You know, it's just so much mezzo here, mezzo piano. Everywhere, mezzo forte, why don't you just start soft and end loud, right? Or end mezzo forte, or get to a mezzo forte in the middle of the um, of this sort of surge that you've got going on here. But then here you put in, put on a little bit more, da -da 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 da da but then you put a diminuendo it so that it ends up softly, da da da. So that at least um, works pretty well. <clears throat> there are a couple of other uh, recent scores that I evaluated where the music just drops off completely, like crescendoing to mezzo forte or forte, and then suddenly subito piano, but the connection isn't quite there. And I think that if you're going to push even further past mezzo forte here, then a diminuendo really is 
indicated if you want this to to feel like you know smooth phrasing all right so um here i'm not so crazy about this slur right why don't you just go up down right rather than up or down right just just um don't slur across the across the bar like this um um, I'm, I'm assuming, Lasse, that you have watched my 12 common scoring errors, right? So this is one of them, right? Slurring across the, um, across the bar when you kind of don't need to, right? So here you really want the emphasis of the downbeat, right? Da, 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 rather than da, 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 da. So you don't have any emphasis till the second beat, right? No emphasis of attack. So try to avoid things like that. Then you know here you got this yep ba 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 kind of um, kind of energy and I think that that fits the music really well. Okay, I don't know if you need uh, the weight of a bass trombone in here, right? You know, the, the, and, and I I appreciate that you are balancing this, right? Mezzo piano to piano, that uh, that would make sense. But it could even work as piano crescendo, right? Or piano with phrasing like with dynamic phrasing in it. Where the um, the trombones are pianissimo, right? That would also work well. And then this could come in as piano and then push a little bit. Like, there's no reason for the flutes to not have dynamic markings in them. I guess you left one out. But see, like you've set a trap. Like if you really did not intend the flutes to have any kind of um, any kind of crescendo here, then you have made them almost invisible underneath like the bassoons and the clarinets right here. Uh, we've talked about this before, you and I, you know, I've commented on your other scores and you've seen a lot of other uh, contributions. And consider how you've scored this, right? You have your second violin right in here, and your cello down here and this lower, um, this lower bass line here. You have your first clarinet reaching up here and the bassoon on the other side. And so you've got, here's your octave melody, right? And this is beautifully smooth. You've got a big slur over it. You have almost no slurs at all in your violin parts. Uh, so this is all just gonna be down, up, down, up, down, up. And here you've got your flutes uh, enclosed by the bassoon and and clarinet. So th these will be very, very difficult to hear. Uh, you know, and it's almost like the wrong timbre, right? Now, if, if everybody were piano, as I suggested, then the flute would have a chance to speak out a little bit, right? Because it doesn't have to do that much but here, if we assume that this is going to crescendo to mezzo forte, at least, right? By the middle here, and these flutes have had no have had no crescendo at all. They are gone by right here. They they have disappeared. They they are almost non-existent. Okay, especially with all of this other stuff happening here. This chunka 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 in your um in your viola and the da -da 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 in your first violins, and this little line going through here on the second violins. How do the flutes, how are these low and mid-range flutes able to to contribute, right? So I, th I think we've discussed this before about how low and mid-range flutes are extremely delicate. That is, that is a register that easily gets buried, swallowed up, devoured by the um, by any kind of accompaniment that goes up to mezzo piano, mezzo forte, right? Now it's not so not so crucial here because it's just clarinet and bassoon and some strings, but still, the strings are absorptive of the sound of the flutes. So you're not going to be able to get away with this the way you think you are, right? Maybe you could mark your flutes up to mezzo piano if everything else were piano. But still, it's just not the you know it doesn't send a good message either. It's you know it's sort of like just constant compensation where you you kind of need something here in the middle that will actually work really really well with your bassoons, your bassoon and and clarinet octaves, right? And what's the obvious answer is the oboes, right? The, the oboes will will provide a beautiful middle you know sort of a center 
sound to this outside um, this outside octave, and they can you know in in this register they can be very soft, right? You could actually score the oboes soft rather than mezzo piano, and leave off any kind of crescendo here, and they would blend in beautifully. So we try that out with your own score, right? Just like ch make the change and listen to it and see what you think. But if, you're, if your mock-up is telling you that the flutes are audible in here and really contributing a lot to the music, then it's lying to you, right? It's like, <clears throat> at least in the context of how you've scored things with the dynamic, you know, with the dynamics and everything else. Now we go to this. Um, this is really kind of nicely scored. Uh, uh, flute uh, piccolo up above, right? It's like taking um, it's like an extra octave, like two octaves above the clarinet, right? So you're kind of catching that very high overtone. <clears throat> and you've got some uh, accompaniment by uh, first violin. You've got like some, a little bit of uh, counterpoint in here. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that that's kind of, kind of nice. A very active... Uh, accompaniment style to the to the main motive and you know and then the the you know the changing role of the of the first violin in here from the main melody to uh, to this other stuff happening so I mean do you really want this though do you really want um, this combination of slurred winds and detache strings you really want this, yeah, da, 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 you know? Do you want that in the strings? And ah, uh, I mean, and, and you know, I mean, do you really want this? No, like, uh, do you want to not tongue the downbeat here? It's like sort of like the same problem that you had back here, right? Do you, you know? You don't want you don't want tum. You just want tum. So here you're actually tonguing on the beat with the first. Right, so you've got the tonguing on the first, tonguing here, tonguing there, right? But like, the piccolo is just going. <whistles> I don't know. I mean, it just, you know, doesn't doesn't the downbeat get any love? All right, and then the very inconsistent slurring right in here. I don't know if it was all intended to be slurred or like some were not were and weren't. Maybe you didn't proofread it very well. I don't know. But this is all fine. Like if this was, were all intended to be slurring by beam groups, you know, ba ba ba, you know, up down, up down, up, right down, and and that's that's fine if you're going down to you know your diminuendo to piano there. I think that works really really well. Okay. <clears throat> but why are the strings so soft and the winds like mezzo piano? Why can't they all be piano? Did that not make a good mix in the uh, in the mock-up? If it didn't, it's lying to you. It's better for everybody to be piano there. But crescendo, right? So crescendo at the beginning. So I kind of want to know where we're going. Like how much crescendo? And and then crescendo to mezzo forte already. So are we getting all the way to forte here? I think that the conductor should know if you really intend things to be forte by the beginning by the middle of the bar. And if so, what does that do to the contrabassoon part and the, you know, and the, you know, and this, this um, trombone in here and so on? I think it just needs a little bit more thought, a little bit more balancing, a little bit more working out of exactly what you want to say here. Never put the, um, never put expression text above uh, first voice. Okay, so like if, if you if you just have a single voice, the expression text has to go below, right? So this crescendo mark should be down here. And so, and like same thing here, you've got a marking of mezzo forte and you've got a marking of crescendo above, right? So just some things did not quite work out. Um, just, just a thought here, um, when you get a swell on, when you get a swell on, on um, you do a swell on the uh, um, rolled suspended cymbal, um, Sometimes it's just easier just to let it kind of decay rather than to um, than to roll roll down in in volume, right? Because the the um, the surface 
of the symbol is gaining energy, right? So here you're saying, okay, well, I'm going to keep striking it. I'm going to keep rolling on it, and I want it to lose energy. All right. So sometimes it's better just to like, you know, just go, and then just let, you know, and then you just get that white noise dying away. Which, when you consider all the other stuff that's going on here, nobody's even going to get it, is going to be able to tell whether it's still being rolled or not. So I'd say just better to let it decay rather than than roll, you know, down to across two beats. Yeah, I would, you know, I, and you could just put a big slur across all of this. Now, question of like, you know, I'm I am seven scores in. I did a I did the um, the first the the A group or the A compilation of website subscriber evaluations this morning. So I'm set I'm seven scores in and I've been already been talking a lot about misuse of registers uh, you know lower registers of the flutes right we already talked about that here. Would I be scolding you about this? Not really not so much. I'm more worried about the oboe going down to this B right so sort of controlling it like you have a diminuendo going down to B right so that kind of works against the natural tendency of the really low notes to speak out. Um, I mean, I hate to say it, that, but like for this length and this red register of um, of pitches, is, you know, you get the most control from a clarinet, right? But you, see, you know, I, I I can see you want those octaves, but it's just like once you get past this D, ah, uh, you know, I mean, you're and you're gonna diminuendo diminuendo out on C and D and then E. It's possible, but it's just not a very pretty sound. And you also are doing it a due, right? And then you can get away with it a bit because you've got the you've got your doubling here with um, with violin. So the violins will absorb some of the sound of the you know the the kind of trumpet like uh, harsher sound of the of the oboes playing unison. But you know still pushing the oboes in unison all the way down to that B and then going a diminuendo out. I mean it's just. It's really not the greatest scoring, to be frank, Lasse. I mean, you know, there are there are some choices you could make here that would be a lot better. I mean, I think the first thing to do would be just to cut the cut the extra oboe, right? Just have a single oboe player to do this if you must, if this must be oboe, mm -hmm. you know. And there are things you can do. You you could trade off to like you get to this D and trade off to bassoon. And then you know you get a much, then have the bassoon walk up to the F, and then just drop out and dovetail back to the oboe, right? And then you you get a consistency of color all the way through, and and then it picks up, and you don't have to worry about pushing the oboe down that far, you know, on a diminuendo. And still, like you know, crescendo, like like crescendo. Are you going to push this? If you're mezzo forte already, you're going to push it down to forte, and then be pulling back from a forte on these low notes. And yeah, it just it's not the prettiest sound. If you know, if the player can do it all day long, it's still not the greatest sound. But I mean, having said that, I mean, I, I don't want you to think I'm just being too critical about everything. I kind of like the way that I mean, I like the strings in here. I like the way that you are kind of working out the accompaniment for this. Uh, I, I made a point about the um, about whether or not there would need to be harmonic support, and you've added um, contrapuntal support as well, right? With your um, with some of the string parts and so on, and and I, I think it works. It all works pretty cool. I mean, I think it uh, yeah it doesn't it doesn't feel like Beethoven to me, but it 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 still has a really nice feel to it, right? And then this is all really lovely right in here. Um, you, you sort of have a have a bit of a um, you know you have like two different approaches here. Like you're having the slurs here, duh, and then you're having like doink, 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 <laughs> right? And then here, like here, I mean, so do you want slurs or don't you? If you get rid of all the slurs, then you have a nice you have this nice pacing, down, up, down, right? down, up, down, up, down, just nice bow strokes. They don't have to be loud. Um, you know, but like it is question is like, do you want soft, 
mezzo forte, mezzo forte, and then piano. I mean, that's kind of a that's a really nice, you know, to to sort of have it bookended rather than soft, me, me, uh, medium, strong, soft, medium, strong. It's it's this is kind of nice to go soft, medium, strong for two bars, back to soft. I still feel that you're way out of balance here. Piano strings and mezzo piano winds that reach higher than the strings, right? So it's really going to all be about winds here is the way that, the way that you've got it scored. Have everybody be the same dynamic, all right? Yeah. So those are my thoughts on your score. And wow, just, you know, it's so great to continue this conversation with you. You know, um, I feel like it's a real back and forth. You know, you, you like I, I decide what, what we should score. You score it and send me the score. I make my comments about it. And then sometimes I hear back in comments from you, um, you know, whether or not my advice made any sense and, um, and maybe some of your comments on other people's scores. And that's a conversation I'm willing to have with anybody out there <laughs> who wants to participate in these challenges. And it's just really wonderful when, you know, just kind of year by year, I see people getting better and wiser and smarter and more imaginative with their approaches and more competent with their orchestration. And, you know, a lot of mistakes I don't have to keep correcting. They start to correct themselves and so on. So anyway, so think about all those things. I hope that it's useful. I really enjoyed looking at this and uh, I actually think the the mock-up was pretty good so um, so great work on all of that and wow I uh, you know with the work that you did on this uh, you know I, I'm imagining what you would do with next year's selection which I've already worked out what it shall be a completely unexpected composer from a different era or a different, an unexpected piece by a well-known composer, let's put it that way, writing in a style that we wouldn't really expect that he would. And I will say no more than that. Thank you so much, and I hope that you are uh, out there, my viewers, uh, watching this. Um, there will be other uh, videos from uh, supporters at this basic level on Patreon coming later today. I hope you can join me for those. Thanks, everybody. And thank you so much, all my Patreon supporters, for making all this possible.